What's going on, YouTube? This is Dash Fight Dylan bringing you the first episode of Keeping It Honest, a talk show where we talk about all things FGC and what's happening in our communities. Joining me today is none other than Ketchup, one of the most prolific talents in MK and just NRS in general, even Quake and many others. Ketchup, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. It's really nice to be a part of the show. Uh, it's not often that I get to sit down and I guess kind of take the gloves off and talk about things that I think definitely need to be discussed and talked about and uh, means a lot to be one of the guests on the show, I suppose. Thank you. Yeah, one, the first guest, not just a guest, the first hey. guest. So yeah, well, we're excited to have you, excited to dive into uh, NRS community and just FTC in general and talk about some things that are happening and just kind of where we move forward from here. Kind of off topic, but I noticed that you have some intentions of playing Melty Blood uh, when it comes out. So tell, talk to me a little bit about that, about why you decided to kind of um, to, to pursue that game. I think part of being a commentator now means that there is absolutely less pressure on like becoming really good at a single game, you know, because you're trying to grind it, you're trying to play in tournaments, you know, back in the Mortal Kombat 9 days, MKX, like I was fixated on those games because I was trying to be one of the best players that I could be, right? Whereas now commentary is the full-time occupation. I kind of like to learn everything because I think, no, it's a cheesy term, but knowledge is power. I'd like to learn as much as I can about fighting games now because I have more time to kind of take them at my own pace. And it's been a chance to learn games that I don't really play before. I've been very vocal that I'm I'm going into Melty Blood completely new. I know nothing about the franchise. I don't even know a single character's name, but I know a lot of my friends are playing it and are excited for it. And I'm always happy to have a new game to play at the local. So we'll see what happens with it. Yeah, uh, Melty Blood's a new adventure for me too. I uh, When I heard about it, I saw it, I was kind of interested. I played the one before the new one. I forget its name. It's got a long name. But I've played it a little bit. I've dabbled in it a little bit offline. So I'm excited for, for the next one too, for sure. And and you're right, you know, with you being, uh, this being your profession, the more game knowledge you have, the better. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that's great. I guess... Let's dive into uh, the the NRS community a little bit. Uh, so there's been a lot of really unfortunate happenings uh, going on uh, in the online scene, in the online community. Uh, just a number of things from uh, a lot of uh, the, the, the PlayStation series, the women in the FGC, they get, their videos are getting dislike bombed. A lot of women and, uh, and, and, and trans you know, members are being harassed. Uh, it's it's pretty bad and then on top of that you have phantom playing where people are playing in tournaments in place of other people and so on and so on and so on what what do you think has caused this and and is this the first time you've kind of dealt with the community kind of taking this downward turn well i can say straight away that it isn't the first time uh, i've seen this happen not just in you know mortal combat or i guess nrs as a whole but it's been a thing in games for as long as I've used social media. Um, there's a lot to digest and break down. The first thing to definitely talk about is just how much abuse that videos and comment sections and stuff are getting on the Women of the FGC videos that PlayStation put out. I got to give PlayStation a huge shout out to highlighting um, the women in the FGC because we have such a high concentration of world-class talent that have definitely had to deal with you would say more adversity to reach that skill level. And the reason being is because of how much abuse you get. I think the, the the number one thing I've been seeing from like the comment sections and everything else, I'd like to go on record and say that I personally do not believe this is the FGC causing that harassment. If anyone uses social media, Twitter, Instagram, all of the all of the sites that you can follow your favorite players, you know, like Cuddlecore, for example, you know, shouts to her, fantastic talent. And big congratulations on the Red Bull sponsorship. Very proud of you. Uh, the social media scene is very supportive because that's the FGC seeing it. It's when the masses, the kind of gaming audience that subscribes to a PlayStation YouTube sees a video, that's where the abuse is coming from. And as far as I'm concerned, seeing that much negative input from the uh, general gaming audience that's seeing it. As far as I'm concerned, that's highlighting why we need to keep showcasing these players. Because 
all these people are doing is proving it right that women have to go through a lot of hassle. You know, I don't want to make this about myself at all, right? But, you know, I'm LGBT. Every time Pride Month rolls around in the year, you get people saying, hey, when's straight Pride Month? Guess what? You don't need it because you get to relish being who you are every day without a single trouble. For other people, that's not so easy. And I think this is very much a similar circumstance. But it has it does not stop players of this caliber from persevering. And that's why I love that this content exists, because it does empower women that would look at this. I mean, they enjoy fighting games or maybe video games in general, and you feel put off because you feel like you're just going to get all this negative input from dudes who just think like less of you. But guess what? There are tons of players out there that are doing super, super well, and they've gone through that you know, and they can prove that you can push forward under those circumstances. And it does take a lot of willpower. And these videos, I really, really hope they do continue to inspire against the waves of, I think, average Joes that just don't get it. Right. I agree. I think that's a really good way to put it. And um, I, I think that you're right in that the, the response to, to things like this is just more proof as to why we need to keep doing it. Agreed. Um, and uh, something that uh, Frankie Ward said, uh, she's a she's a very prominent uh, CSGO uh, I love host Frankie. She's faster. great. Yeah, she's great. She Something that she said on Twitter the other day uh, was that in, in the last 10 or 11 panels she's asked to be on, 10 of them were like about like women in the space and things like that. And she said, we, we also need to normalize inviting women on regular panels. Um, and, and not just ones that are, that are tailored to, to that specific niche. So I think there's a need for both. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it's really a shame to see the response that they have gotten, but it just further proves the point of why they need to be there. Yeah, um, it's, it's like I've said, it's the mixture of responses because on general social media from those that follow these players, there's a lot of support and there's a lot of love there. It's the greater audience, you know, of, of more casual focused players that like subscribe to a PlayStation YouTube, they see it and they just lose their minds. And it's like, come on, like, you know, why are you having to, why are you having to get so up in arms about people that just want to celebrate their existence? You know, I'm a right. firm believer in people's right to exist. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. Exactly. And, and then the, you know, it brings up to the next point of, of players in the community that take advantage of the era that we're in. So there's been a lot of instances where players are playing under other people's gamer tags in tournaments that would, they would easily win and just kind of misrepresenting themselves and, and just kind of what the tournament's about. So where, where do you think that this desire comes from or why do you think that these people do this uh, and then they end up getting caught and it just becomes this whole, this whole big thing and then it just seems like they just do it all over again? This situation really frustrates me because it's not something that we've had as regular as we have right now. You know, the idea of something that is celebrated in fighting games and has been for a long time is that it's nearly impossible to cheat right yep. you know there's a lot of cheating scandals in other games other communities whether it's people going to lands and having you know some kind of aim bot or wall hack installed and they kind of try and sneakily get away with it they almost never get away with it right they get found and it shakes up the entire community and sometimes it causes even more damage to sometimes entire territories because it's there are more avenues for you to be able to try and pull one over on everyone else the nature of fighting games unless you've got like i don't know certain shortcuts built into a stick or something which has happened a couple of times over like the 10 years that i've been in the fgc you don't see it in offline competition but with this rise of online tournaments it does open up ways for people to be dishonest with themselves in tournament and that has come from on more than one occasion, you know, one time is too many, but it's been a lot more than once where players are now getting busted for having other people play for them. And then sometimes you get players entering tournaments with hidden gamer tags, obvious secondary accounts. And the whole situation has spent the past two years, I think, frustrating me because obviously the world has been the way it is. And tournaments have taken the online plunge. Mortal Kombat was one of the first, I would say the first, 
fighting game that had a successful transition to online. You know, the netcode is fantastic and the support was there via pro competition, PlayStation tournaments. You know, they really came in and saved, I think, uh, the competitive side of the community, did PlayStation tournaments, and it went for a good two years. In that time, though, we had constant, constant situations of players that are entering on accounts that are like level 10 and they have a gamer tag talking about a character and... Clearly, this is not someone's main account, right? They've got like X amount of hours logged, like barely even 10 hours. And it's like, this clearly isn't your account, right? Who are you? What are you doing? And there's always discussion over, could this be this player or that player? I'm not going to name a single player in this discussion because I do not want to start a witch hunt. But there have been other cases where players have been straight up caught red-handed having people play for them. And... All this says to me is a degree of complete and utter disrespect for the opportunities that were put forward. And I think as well, a real lack of appreciation. You know, it's not every day that your game still has the degree of support that Mortal Kombat 11 did have. And there yeah. are a lot of players that squandered that. And unfortunately, it will be, as far as I'm concerned, a stain on the MK11 scene during these last two years. And it just comes down to players being dishonest and they should be ashamed of themselves as well so what do you think is what do you think is the right thing to do with these players so do what is the punishment is there is there is there Bans. just like your band you're done okay i mean look i'm not a to right i have run some tournaments in the past but nothing of the scale of online leagues this and that but players it is of my opinion that players have done it to this degree because there has been no punishment for it, or very little. Uh, I, there has not really been instances where players who have even openly admitted to doing it, because so many tournaments are unrelated to each other, I think people right. are a little bit nervous perhaps of saying, you cheated here, so you're banned from there, because they'll just turn around and say, what the hell, it wasn't even that tournament. I don't really recall many players being made an example of for blatant cheating. And when that happens, if there's other players out there that are just tempted to try it, they f surely they feel less at risk. Because if they get found, oh, it blows up on Twitter, it blows up on social media. But then that's it. You know, a week later, they're playing in a tournament. A player openly admitted to cheating in a tournament and a week later was in another tournament that had qualified to reach that point. And that just didn't sit right with me. I feel like that player should not have been allowed to be there because they didn't deserve to be there. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, I think that the right answer is ban. And it's, I don't know if that turns into a, a universal like ban list um, from certain communities or how that works or what that looks like. But I, I do agree that there needs to be punishment and it needs to be, you know, so-and-so is no longer able to participate in our events. I tell you uh, what, if this happened in any other game, um, especially, you know, imagine in like a tier one esport, you know, one of the biggest games in the world, a player was outed for cheating in a similar fashion. They would be off their team straight away and they'd probably never get picked up by a team again at least for a few years that would be a lifetime stain on that player's reputation and would likely make it very difficult for them to find that position again i've seen it happen sure. when other players get caught cheating not necessarily in the same way but the reality is when you cheat you cheat and it is one of the biggest offenses you can possibly do in the competitive space it is an unforgivable thing to do. I agree. You know, talking talking on other big esports, uh, something else that's really been a discussion is is what does the FGC want to do? Uh, do you know? Does it want to say this this niche, this smaller type of of esport? You know, for lack of a better term. Or is there is does the the greater FGC want to grow? Do we do we want to be big? Do we want to be a, a big esport? What what are your thoughts on that? Like where where are you with that in terms of kind of what would have to change and and what would have to happen in order to kind of make the FGC become bigger, but 
also maintain itself at the same time or, or, or do you even want it to be bigger? I think this is a discussion that has been around forever and for good reason. You know, we look at games around us and we look at the scales they reach. Um, and there are people out there that look at the game that they play and they go, why is our game not that big? Why is our game not in a giant arena and, and this and that and with the millions of dollars of payout? And then at the same time, we have to look at all the different variables that cause it to be that way. A big thing is publisher support. Um, the budgets that are just out of this world, gigantic for a lot of those games. Um, and it, it seems like, again, I'm no financial expert, but it seems like there's a lot of investment into it by the companies that make those games, right? I mean, look at what Riot are doing and the fact that almost everything they're doing, it, it seems very self enclosed right they do it themselves and they do it well um but at the same time i think it's definitely fair to say that fighting games likely do not have those degree of budgets um i think some have done very well you know you can look at the figures of mortal kombat 11 mortal kombat x those games have sold in their millions and millions and millions but the release schedule tends to be different doesn't it you know we we know absolutely that mortal kombat 11 is not the last game that NetherRealm is going to put out in the next few years. There, there's going to be a new project and how much support that gets will just remain to be seen, right? None of us have any idea. But I'm a personal believer in growth. You know, I want everything to be bigger and bigger and bigger because all it means is that the community as a whole gets to grow. Even now, compared to where we were 10 years ago, you know, I was a Mortal Kombat 9 player and I, 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 I tell this story a lot, but I, I went to World Game Cup in 2012 and I got top three. I placed third place at one of the biggest European major tournaments. Uh, my prize was a copy of Assassin's Creed that didn't even work on my console. You know what I mean? That was, that was my prize right. for getting third place. Whereas 10 years later, getting third place at a, a big, big tournament, on top of the fact that more players are able to travel out there and there are more sponsorships and people that can fly out the, the kind of elite level. Um, it is bigger than it was, but it has been baby steps. Uh, so, like I said, there's, there's plenty of discussions around it and it just comes down to budget and surely how much companies are willing to invest in esports. Um, you know, because it's, it's fair to assume that... With some games, investing in esports could be considered a business loss, right? Because you're spending all this money to pay players and to run these events and to fly people out. There's got to be someone out there that's going, right, but where are the returns? How do we make money? Which, to be fair, goes into the one thing that I saw do out of this world good in MKX that I am shocked not every fine game company is doing is crowdfunding. I don't know about the red tape. I don't know about any of the legal red tape behind that, but what I do know is that Mortal Kombat X's esports, the Blue Steel Sub-Zero skin, which was like three pounds, did so much to support the competitive prize pools because of just how that one crowdfunded skin performed. And crowdfunding is the, f it feels to me like it's the future of raising funds for tournaments and events. And I just, I get so surprised to not see it more. You know, that's that's the big one for me is why don't we see more crowdfunding? I'm sure there's a reason, but I'd love to know that reason. Right. Well, and you, you kind of hit it on the head whenever you were talking about how Riot kind of keeps their stuff in, internal and how they kind of do things themselves. And I think it'll be really interesting to see how Riot enters fighting games. Yes. And if they do take this, this crowdfunding approach where... Uh, or, or even just like this free to play model, right? Where they take the free to play model, but you can customize your character so far, right? Like you can make like a uh, Ryu's fireball be like a, a dragon head or just something, you know, over the top, right? Where you can completely customize your characters and it's all free. It's all, well, the game is free, but cosmetics you pay for and see if this can turn into like a crowdfunding for, for a big tournament. Um, and it would be really cool, like you said, with, with MKX to revisit something like that. And speaking on NRS and, and you know, the kind of their, their release, release schedule, there's, there's a lot of talk on what the next NRS game is. Uh, you know, yeah. at first, a lot of people thought it was going to be this Marvel DC thing. Then people were like, oh, no, it's Injustice 3 because of this leak. And then people were like, no, it's MK12 because of this leak. So... 
what do you think it is or what do you kind of hope it is in uh, in kind of a way that makes sense for NRS and makes sense towards uh, their larger player base? It's a really hard question to answer because I have no idea. Um, I can definitely talk about what I hope it is because I'm always after a new Mortal Kombat. The chances of it being back-to-back -back MK feels very slim. It would be extremely uncharacteristic of NetherRealm to release two of the same um, franchise back-to-back. -back. As we all know, it went MK9, Injustice Gods Among Us, MKX, Injustice 2. Mortal Kombat 11. So if we're following the pattern alone, Injustice 3 could definitely be on the cards in theory. But at the same time, I just don't know how much I believe in that being the next game. Uh, because Injustice 2, uh, I definitely am not going to say that it was uh, a product that didn't do well, because Injustice does very, very well as well. You know, we can even see there's an animated movie coming out following the timeline of the first Injustice, I think. Um, but I'm talking about this more personally. <clears throat> Inhaled dust, even though I just had some coffee. Great. Uh, Injustice 2, I did not like as much as Injustice 1. And it had nothing to do with anything except for mechanics, actually. I've always been a fan of, like, that fast, kind of aggressive game. That's why I, I love Ultimate MK3, a lot of classic fighting games that have the speed on them, right? MKX was really fun. Injustice was a franchise, I think, that was really... Uh, you could describe Injustice mostly in the chaos, right? That The first Injustice was one of the most broken fighting games I've ever seen and played. But in hindsight, I liked that because every character was just so wild. Injustice 2 didn't have that same level of insanity, right? It had more kind of fundamental stuff behind it. You had the air techs, you had the, the ways to try and maybe stop these pressure situations on wake up, the meter burn roll, that more mechanics to kind of allow it to be maybe a more varied game. But it resulted in a game that was a lot slower to me and I loved watching Injustice 2 and I still have some of my happiest memories commentating it professionally um, but as a player I definitely didn't enjoy that as much as the first Injustice because Injustice 1 just had all the crazy stuff so if there is Injustice 3 I kind of want to see some of that wildness come back but truth be told of all the games that could be next I, f I feel like it's something new you know, I, I just, with the fact that we haven't had any news or anything like that, if it is Injustice 3, it, like, you would think it would be Legacy to Injustice 2, so I, I don't know what the, you know, if there's a delay here, right, because we haven't had any announcement for a long time, but I, I, my brain tells me surely if it's Injustice 3 would have heard something by now, but like I said, you know, I've never worked in game development, so that kind of stuff I'm not particularly clued up on. But I would love to see something new. You know, NetherRealm have a lot of creativity, and I'd love to see that creativity go into, like, something fresh. Yeah, I, I don't... And I kind of feel the same way. I don't know if it's because of the doubt that's kind of been sown with all of this. It's this game, it's this game, it's this game. But I also had this feeling that... I don't know if it's Injustice 3. Um, there's just something that doesn't fit, and I, I can't really put my finger on it. I don't know what it is. But there's just something about it being in Justice 3 that I, I just can't believe it. Um, and I don't, I'm not 100% sold on that being it. So, uh, experience I, I has taught you. me to take what people say on social of, <clears throat> oh, yeah, this new rumor, this new leak. I've heard like 10, you know, I've heard yeah. like 10 potential new games after MK11, according to social media. So I just do not pay attention to any of it. Yeah, that's probably probably some good advice. <laughs> good, definitely good advice. Take it with a grain of salt. Take it with with many many grains. Or do as um, I do and ignore it entirely. <laughs> there you go. Well, I think that's uh, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, I really want to thank you for stopping by and talking with us and no, kind of talking about some some hard points. So I greatly greatly appreciate that. And, um, you know, thank you for, for, for your mind. Thank you for all you do for the scene and for the community. Uh, we really appreciate you. And uh, any, any parting words you had for uh, the viewers out there? Where we, can we find your content? You, the floor is yours. I, this is normally a point where I'd say, you know, you can find me on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but I think given the subject of 
of what we've been talking about tonight. Uh, I know we've been talking about a lot of potential heavy hitting things that have been happening in the scene and the community right now. I'd like to use this final moment to really highlight the positive side of things as well. You know, the hard working players, commentators, tournament organizers, streamers, the people that are still putting their heart and soul into what we do amidst all of this stuff that's been going on on social media and everywhere else. I do strongly believe that once the world returns to an offline space, I think we're going to see considerably less of it because a lot of the people that are uh, causing the problems online, I don't think they're the kind of people that will attend offline tournaments regularly. And offline is where my family is, you know what I mean? So I want to highlight everyone that continues to put their work into it, especially those that make the games and, you know, the nether realms and everyone else, because you work tirelessly around the clock and no doubt what comes next is going to be a banger. There's a lot of negativity out there, but I've always been a firm believer in we have to highlight the positives as well because there's a lot of good people in the space. You know, there, there are bad ones, but we're not all bad. Right. Yeah, for sure that for sure. Um, you know, TOs and developers and just the people that make our scene what it is. Yeah. Definitely don't get the credit that they deserve sometimes. And, uh, I think that's great. Yeah. To leave on a positive note and just say that our scene, our scene has some problems. Um, but all the great people in it make it, make it great. Thank you once again for stopping by. Uh, appreciate you. And guys, if you liked any of the points that we talked about in the show, be sure to leave a like and comment on the video. Uh, discuss it in the comment section. Talk about what we talked about and give us your thoughts. Uh, so thank you once again, and we'll see you in the next video.